Princess Diana's former butler Paul Burrell is still to come, but it's time now for Olympic swimmer and defender of women's sports, Sharon Davies. And remember trans athlete Emily Bridges, who before British cycling stepped in, was topping podiums like this, where the best performing biological woman could only achieve third place. Well, the woke darlings at Vogue have honoured the 25 women who they say are redefining Britain in 2023, with Bridges among them. Writing and posing for the magazine, Bridges declares wrong. I was banned from competitive cycling because I'm trans. That won't stop me fighting for my rights. Wrong, Emily. You could compete in the open category created specifically by British Cycling for trans athletes. They also claim that concerns about trans women having a physical advantage over biological women are, quote, unsubstantiating. Added. A report found that biomedical factors such as bone density and lung size do not pose an advantage for trans athletes. So, Sharon Davies, I wanted to start there because... You've done a ton of research on this, and that is something uh, that you strongly dispute, Sharon, right? It's not just me that strongly disputes it. It's pretty much everyone across the whole world. So um, this is why, you know, obviously the World Cycling Association, the World Aquatics Association, Track and Field, British um, Boxing, Rowing, Triathlon, They've all said, yes, all the science shows us that actually you can't remove male puberty advantage. You know, and, and Emily's very, very um, deliberately missed out the fact that there's a Q angle, which if you're male, that's your, you know, going to be much smaller. So the Q angle in women is quite a lot larger from your hips to your knees. Uh, in football, it means that five to six times as many women end up with knee problems. You know, we saw that just recently with obviously with the World Cup. Uh, we lost a few of our players because of that. And it, it went to something like cycling where, you, where you're sitting on a saddle and you're able to put that power through your legs so much better when that Q angle is smaller. So it's utter garbage to say that there's not an advantage. Mm. And, you, you know, you were spot on when you said that headline. It's extraordinary that Vogue can write something like that. I was banned from competitive cycling because I'm trans. Well, this time last year, Emily Bridges was cycling with the men in the university championships. And, you know, identifying as Emily Bridges, which is absolutely fine, and able to compete. And Emily Bridges will always be able to yeah. compete. However, and that's in the Emily open category, right, the, Sharon? That's <laughs> and that's in the open category. That Emily Bridges would yeah, be able absolutely. to do. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, all that Emily Bridges is not able to do anymore is to compete with biological females who will have a disadvantage competing with someone who's biologically male. And we, we know that. You know, there's 18 studies in the world. The last one was September of last year, which came out of Brazil, one of the largest studies on a huge number. And that's that even after 14 years, they couldn't remove the, the puberty advantage. So there's no way, you know, that it, it's a level playing field. And and, you know, I, I wish Emily good luck. I want her to be happy and, and, and safe. Absolutely. But I'm still going to keep on fighting for the opportunity for people that are biologically mm. female to have fair sport. And I'm not going to stop. <laughs> Do you know what I find so depressing about this particular case, Sharon? The complicity of Vogue magazine. Now, I remember a time when Vogue magazine used to be all about empowering and standing up for the yeah. rights of women, in this case, biological women, by including Emily Bridges in this list of 25 women who they say are going to redefine the world, isn't Vogue magazine actually saying that it doesn't respect women's sport? Because as you know, Sharon, as I know, women's sport is destroyed if biological men are able to compete. So actually, I'm furious with Vogue magazine. They would yeah, rather I know, I know. choose wokery yeah, I mean, than actually true feminism. I know. I sometimes think that they just do these things deliberately because they know we're going to talk about it, right? So it just gives them profile. And part of me wants to not bother because it gets exactly what they want. But when you think of all the wonderful sportswomen that we have in the, you know, in the UK, and I mean, I will just, Katie Archibald, okay? So Katie Archibald has won Olympic, European, Commonwealth, world gold medals. Our British girls um, won the pursuit earlier this month in Glasgow for the first time since 2014. And this time last year, 
Katie was getting over from the fact that her fiance woke up in the morning and her fiance had died next to her. Okay. Oh. So the most, har- most harrowing oh. situation. Oh, and goodness. one year later, she wins the world championships. And they say of all the sports people in Great Britain that they could talk about, they cover Emma Bridges, who's won nothing. Do you know what And will win nothing. Because they're not going to change the rules. And I just think it's so disgraceful and disrespectful to biological female athletes who we have. I mean, look at all the lionesses. They could have picked any one of them. Well, indeed. You know, we have female athletes. Indeed. Or I would plump for Helen Halsby, who is the star of the England Roses netball team, one of the most beautiful women in sport, right, who was just named the entire best player of the World Cup as England made the final for the first time in history. You know, you're so right. Why don't we put those women on a pedestal instead of Emily Bridges, who, as you say, has won nothing. And look, we both want Emily Bridges to be happy. Of course we do. But Emily Bridges has also lied here. All Vogue magazine has lied, one or the other, because Emily Bridges is not banned from competing. No, and never, ever has been. You know, nobody is banned from competing. All that they're banned from is competing in a category they don't qualify for. Exactly the same as I'm banned from competing in the under-12s. It would be unfair and it would be cheating. I'm sorry, but it's cheating to want to race in a category where you have an advantage over everybody else in the category. So, you know, I I just think, and I think the general public are, are really getting fed up with this, to be honest with you. All our polling shows this, that the general public are very much on the side of wanting fair sport. They yeah. want their young daughters and their sisters to have those opportunities, you know. And, and something like professional sport nowadays is a career. Totally. So we're not just talking about totally. hobby that we, that we do at the weekends. You know, this is a job opportunity. There's a 1,000 women in this country that earn their living from sport. There's 11,000 men. So we have a tiny piece of cake, Dan, and then for us to be told we've got to budge over, it's, it's just extraordinary, really. Yeah, no, that's a really extraordinary stati- statistic. Sharon Davies, you know how much I love having you here. Thank you so much. We will speak very you. soon.